put in place. So if I'm a PCV designer, like give me some nuggets from this part of your experience. Like how should, as a PCV designer, how should I incorporate some of that into my design practice? Um, you know, what are some best practices that I can follow? Best practices. If you get a chance, and that's, your website is awesome because you're going to pay, hey, come out, talk to us, see the tours and everything else, do that. Absolutely. We're very transparent. Very transparent and watch it. Ask questions. Let me give you a couple examples. Um, as a designer, I hate rails. I got to put break off rails on a, on a board or something else like this. It's like, why? It's not that big of a deal. Right. Just put it into a carrier and let it go through it. Watching what they have to go through when it goes into a carrier, watching what the rails really do and how much faster the process happens was kind of set me aside. Okay, and now I'm starting to understand it. The handling. One of the things that I learned most was how do you limit the damage that happens when you're handling the boards? I'm sure that's you guys so have that problem. That's very true, yeah. Every, in, less handling, the better. Less handling. Less times you have to have somebody touch the board, right. the higher probability of it working the first time out. Absolutely. So when I watch them put it into carriers and flip the carriers and do everything else, it's like you're handling the board more and more. The rails make sense. The other thing that was interesting is we did a lot of um, very high-end boards. And understanding uh, putting 201s 402s on design as a designer i love it man give me the smaller the better let me pound it in there and just make it happen it makes my design a little bit easier the signal integrity and power the signal integrity guys love it because no smaller is better we just have less discontinuity and such watching them struggle with 201s and if you've never seen a 201 on a board and when they're trying to do a rework especially over at the at the quality inspection right i'm i have an absolute I'm in awe of the people doing the quality inspection. The fact is they can look at that, and I can't tell if that thing's tombstoned or not. And they go, oh, no, it's tombstoned, and they hand solder it back on. It's like, you're kidding me. Hell, okay, this is cool. <laughs> but the question always comes up is, why? Why did it tombstone? Right. What's going on there? How are you making that actually happen? Right. And then what can I do in my designs to do it? When you're building five boards and you're doing a prototype, it doesn't matter so much. It's like, okay, great. You touch the boards and you spend 10 minutes touching a board and it's not a big deal. Right. When you're doing 10,000 boards, 100,000, a million boards, you can't be touching them. They've got to go through the first time. Obviously, there's the prototype runs and everything else. You do right. 5, 10, then you do 100, then you do 1,000 and you build up and you start to ramp. But understanding why that process happens is always fascinating to me. So with the 201s, this one instance I learned was... I had 201s next to a charge ball connector, a uh, Samtech charge ball connector, high-speed connector. The charge ball connector needed a thicker stencil, and the 201 needed a thin, thinner stencil because if you look at it from a paste point of view, look at a volumetric efficiency of the paste. Right. How do you know how much volume is going to be on there, where it's going to go? That is what they're always battling. This is why you end up having, when you do put your paste down on your board, they never use that, almost never, unless it's very specialized for maybe some of the... Some of the linear tech power supplies and stuff like that are very specific about the window painting they do and things. But for the most part, they're always doing something funny to the paste to control the volume of paste down. So what I really learned was is keeping the 201 so close to the charge ball because they needed such a thicker stencil because they had to put a certain volume down. And then you had these 201s right next to it was causing problems and for a whole bunch of reasons they couldn't get they were putting too much paste in the 201s and that was causing bridging and also causing and all this other stuff Absolutely. and the thing about the line and especially the quality control and um and inspections is they just fix it a lot of the times they just go oh no problem Ch -ch -ch done there you go and you never learn from it right so this is why i learned when i'm walking and if you come when you do your walkthroughs here right. go look at what they're what they're touching up Right. Say, why did you touch that up? Especially if you're doing your own boards. Now, here's here's the biggest thing. You get a board coming through. Obviously, if it's a, a, a very simple board where the smallest things on there is an 0805, eh, it wouldn't worry so much about yeah, it. Yeah, there's nothing to worry about. Yeah, it's, it's standard technology. It's when you start to push. When you push right. the edge of technology, watch your board being built. Ask to come over here when they're going to build it. And walk around. Look at the quality inspectors that are looking at it. And look at the rework. What are they touching? Are they touching it because it was a manufacturing process because of handling? Okay, well, maybe that's something you can handle. Or is it this charge ball 201? Or is it something else? And you learn more from what they're touching up and they're going. 
and then talk to the uh, manufacturing engineer also.